This is a video about how you don't have to worry about revenge because the Almighty takes care of it. Here's a picture. This is the person who bought my farm. I think it's him. I can't be sure because most of the people in his family all look alike. But that's from his Facebook page. Anyway, um, I needed to sell the farm because some relative left me with a lot of debt. He didn't pay me back. And even though I was working, it wasn't enough to pay the debt. So the only offer I got for the farm was this person I just showed in the picture. Let me show it again. And um, of course, in the beginning, he was very polite and nice. Anyway, to skip ahead, he got very angry when I married my dear departed husband. He said I needed to leave the farm. I had made a deal with him to sell him the farm with no interest as long as I could stay there until he finished paying me, which would take nine years. You know, he was not planning to live on the farm. He just kept his livestock there, and I would stay in the cabin. And this worked out pretty good for three years. And then after I got married, he got mad. I don't know why, for sure. Um, I presume maybe it was because I wasn't available anymore. I used to help him a lot on the farm because me and my husband would go back and forth from his boat in northern Florida back to the farm in central Florida. So he started hiring a lawyer and I had to hire lawyers. My lawyers were paid and they didn't do anything. Then another one was paid and said that the case was getting too complicated. And eventually this person who kept his livestock on the farm, started doing things like shedding my electricity, dumping out my fish pond, letting his animals break down my garden. And so I thought it was best to just go somewhere else and rent a while, maybe eventually buy something else. I gave him the mortgage without interest originally, so he was paying me every month. And I used to visit the farm in the beginning after I left. I was renting a, a house, not this house I'm in now. And I had told him, it's not right what you're doing. And you know, making me leave the farm and the Almighty is going to make things happen either to you or your family or your children. And he said, uh, don't you worry about it. Nothing's going to happen to me. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this happens to everyone, but I've seen all my life things happen to people who hurt other people. There's a relative who's who stole almost everything from me, my mother, and my father. And he came down with the most horrific diseases. Uh, I had asked one uh, phys physician I was working for at the time, and he looked at the, the medical reports from my relative, and he said, these are biblical diseases. What he meant was they're just so rare. 
Anyway, this person who stole from us died at 65 years of age. My mother died at 90. So what does it matter what he stole if my mother lived 25 years longer than him and lived well and happy and got to see her grandsons? So that's just one example of things that happen to people who hurt others, to people who don't believe in anything except, you know, gimme, 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 you know, dog eat dog, as they say. So back to the subject of the person who purchased the farm. I've been trying for years to uh, get rid of him, my, my resentment about what he did. And I think I finally hit on it today that, that I need to feel sorry for him because he's an immigrant and he came from a really wild place where, where that's how you have to act, you know, lie, try and get everything you can, cheat who you can cheat, steal when you can steal, you know, you have to do this to survive. And even though he's so successful here in the States, you know, he has a store, you know, he has a family, he owns like five different properties, has plenty of money. He doesn't need to be, be so, you know, survival only anymore like he did in his, in his country. But those, those habits stayed with him, even though he doesn't need those habits anymore. I don't know why some immigrants don't understand it's different here in the states you know there there's law there's other countries where you don't call the police if you have a problem because if they come out they'll beat you up just for bothering them and you have to bribe them to do things it doesn't work like that here so what happened to this purchaser of the farm who ended up throwing out an old Jewish woman, me, and my handicapped, severely handicapped, older Vietnam veteran husband, threw us out from the farm, basically. So what happened to the purchaser of the farm? Well, he owned a store with his brother, which he still owns, his brother had a massive stroke and couldn't share the work in the store anymore permanently. So then he had to be in that store early in the morning to late at night, seven days a week. And the Almighty wasn't finished with him with that. About, uh, let me see, two years ago, we had a hurricane in Central Florida, Hurricane Irma, and he left a message on my phone saying that several trees from a neighboring, neighboring property fell on the cabin I had been in, and also the outdoor kitchen, and also the outdoor laundry room and luxury outhouse, and destroyed everything. So, he didn't want me there, he didn't want my husband there. Now he can't use the cabin either. And the last thing I checked online with the property appraiser's office is that he hasn't even rebuilt it. So is this the only karma that he'll get? I don't know. It's plenty though. So why should I worry and why should I be angry? In fact, I should feel sorry for him that he's just so clueless. At the time that he was trying to throw me out of the cabin, I had asked his wife for help, and she said, I'm sorry, he just won't listen to me. I had asked his daughter for help, and she said, it's none of my business. I had sent a message to the religious leader of his congregation to help me, and I never heard back from him. In fact, the purchaser of the farm, this guy that threw us out found out about me contacting his wife, daughter, and religious leader, and he said, 
don't talk to my family and don't talk to my religious leader. Nobody can help you. Nobody. How do you like that? Well, he forgot the Almighty, didn't he? The Almighty helped me. Another thing is, he bought the farm for almost $200,000. It's now worth 99000 Maybe it's the market. Maybe it's because he knocked down almost every tree on the property and it just looks awful now. And what's the other, other part of that karma? Me. I'm in a house that I paid 31000 for. It's now worth almost 100000 So you see how everything balances out? So why should I be angry? The only correct thing for me to feel now with all this is, is to feel sorry for him. Things could have been very different for him. So that's it so far, although the story of the farm is not finished yet because his lawyer wanted me to sign the satisfaction of mortgage paper because the purchaser, it's been nine years, he finished paying for it. But um, I found out I can make my own satisfaction mortgage document and hand it in to the uh, clerk, the recording clerk of the court, which I did. So we'll see if uh, him or his lawyer have discovered that I handed it in. If they're not uh, checking up on these things and going on the courthouse website, they're not going to know because I'm not their secretary. I'm not going to you know, let them know that. I have to look these things up online. So feel sorry for your adversaries. I've had plenty of adversaries in my life and they always end up really in bad conditions. And the karma, I don't know what else to call it, the, maybe I should call it heavenly justice that the Almighty arranges is always perfectly suited to whatever crimes they, they committed. Think about it. You can love your enemies, just love them from a distance. That's all. <laughs>